Welcome to June's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is jump game six. You are given a zero indexed integer array nums and an integer k. You are initially standing at index zero. In one move, you can jump at most k steps forward without going outside the boundaries of the array, obviously. So that is, you can jump from index i to any index in the range of i plus one to minimum of n minus one and i plus k inclusive. So you want to reach the last index of the array and your score is the sum of all the numbers that you've uh, hit so far that you visited. Return the maximum score you can get. So they give you a few hints. Uh, I'm not going to read them though because I think they tell you the answer too obviously. Like let's just say if we want to do this straightforwardly, how do we solve this? We can kind of intuitively tell that there's probably some sort of DP solution here. Uh, so let's build a DP array in the beginning uh, indicating all the numbers inside of our array. So this would be like look something like this. Now uh, what would we do to calculate what our maximum sum so far would be? So at the very beginning, we know uh, we're going to start at index 0, and that's just going to be the number of i here. Now, if we want to get to the index uh, 1 here, what would be the maximum score we can get? Well, we would take whatever maximum score that we've calculated so far and add it to the number here. Here, we can see there's only one number, uh, so that would be 1, and we would just add negative 1 here, and this would just stay at 0. Now, at negative 2, we want to take the maximum of from this number, from this index, to uh, the minus k numbers. So up to these two points, these are the um, points that we could have come from. So we want to take the maximum from what we've calculated so far and take that. So here we see 1 is the maximum, so we'll add negative 2 there. So negative 1 right now is the maximum score we can get at this point. Now what about a 4? Four, we're going to add four plus the maximum of whatever is between here. And we can see that would be zero. So that's four here. Negative seven takes the maximum between these two. Uh, that would be uh, four. So this would be negative three. I think I accidentally added extra zero here. And finally, take the maximum between these two. That would be four plus three. That should be seven. And you can see the answer is exactly that seven. So this seems pretty straightforward, right? It's a perfectly fine n times k solution. Uh, let's begin by first calc you know, calculating this. What will we do? We first calculate n, find a dp array, make it all equal to 0 at first. And then we'd say, OK, dp0 is just equal to nums of 0. And we'd say for i in range of uh, 1 through n, we would say, all right, let's calculate the dp of i, which would equal nums of i plus the maximum of, we can take our dp array and say, uh, get the max of zero, because we don't want to go out of bounds, and i minus k, I believe. Yeah, i minus k all the way up to this point, i. We don't want to include the i, so we'll just say i here. And finally, all we would do is just return the last number here on, on our dp array. So this would be n times k solution, and it should work, but unfortunately it's going to reach a time limit exception. It's not fast enough. And we can kind of tell just gut-wise that there's probably something un inefficient about continually calculating, you know, the subarray and getting the max and getting the max and getting the max. It's like, like, surely there's a way that we can sort of take some information and bring it over. And one of the hints they tell you to do is like, well, what about a heap? If you take the smallest value from the heap and just make sure that the index value is still in bounds, then we can just um, we can make this a little more efficient. We can make it an n log n solution. So what we'll do is we'll create a heap and we want to make make it a max heap. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. Um, and we're always just going to take our max amount from our heap, but also make sure that this index value is in bounds. And if it's not, we need to pop it off because we can't use that one. Okay, so let's. Instead of using a DP array, what we'll do is create a heap. And this heap is going to contain what? It's going to have to contain two values. It's going to contain the max sum that we've calculated so far, as well as the um, index value. So uh, because this is a min heap in Python, we're actually going to have to make a negative here. So we'll say negative nums of 0 and 0 to begin with. Okay, so instead of having this DP array, what do we want to do? Uh, well, let's see. What we'll do is first we want to see if we need to pop off anything from our heap. So while 
we're going to peek here at the very first value, the index. While this is less than i minus k, yeah, if it's less than i minus k, we need to pop it off, right? So what we'll do is just say heap pop off our heap. Okay. Okay, so now what's the max so far? So max so far, I'm just gonna calculate that here. This is gonna be the very top one, right? This would be the very top. And keep in mind, this is still uh, a negative right now, but that's okay. We can just uh, take our max so far and we will add to our heap then a tuple of this nums i and actually we're gonna have to subtract here from our max so far so we'll say max so far subtracted by this nums i and make sure to also pass in the index value so that would be um how we calculate our max so far inside of our heap. But at the very end, how do we return the max calculated so far? Because basically we need to figure out uh, what is the value at this i index. So to do that, I'm just gonna cheat and just say if uh, at this point i equals what n minus one, then I'm just gonna get our max so far and just return that, I think. Actually, we'll have to say nums of i like this, and we'll also have to make the same negative because right now we need to reconvert that back into a positive value. So uh, let's see. Otherwise, we just want to return nums of zero in case it's only a length of one. So let's make sure this works here. Okay, that looks like it's working, so let's submit it. And there we go, accepted. So <laughs> time complexity wise, this actually ends up becoming n log n because of our heap. Uh, there are some ways that you can make this n log k by using a priority queue, but uh, I found that pretty confusing and not very intuitive. This isn't that intuitive either, but I think it's a lot easier to understand given um, the first solution that we were coming from. So I think we'll keep it here. Uh, if you can find, I think there's probably ways to like make this cleaner, but good enough. So we'll end it, end it at that. All right, thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.